I'm Heather Green, and I'm a whiskey expert. Well, fantastic. I have two Scotch whiskeys in front of me, and looking at them from the top in a decanter, I can't quite tell the difference in color, but let's get to it. Scotch whiskey is a type of whiskey, whiskey being defined as a distilled spirit made with three simple ingredients, water, yeast, and grain. The magic of whiskey is the fact that we can create this gorgeous cornucopia of flavors from these three ingredients depending on where it comes from. One of the things that make Scotch whiskey Scotch whiskey, that it is aged in Scotland. It must be aged for a minimum of three years on Scottish soil. Just looking at this right away, we have a nice gold color. This is a Glen Cairn glass, and Glen Cairn glasses are something that I like to use when I'm professionally nosing or tasting. You see this bulbous shape at the bottom. This is a way to condense flavor so that I can really get at the aromatics in a whiskey. I'm gonna say flat out that this is a very, very beautiful whiskey. It has a lot of finesse to it. There's some orange blossom, slight vanillas, and my favorite, favorite element is a little bit of mustiness that I get in a warehouse where scotch whiskey is aged. What really separates a single malt scotch, which I believe this one to be, from any other kind of whiskeys in the world is the use of 100% malted barley. So if you see the word single, on a single malt scotch. Single means it comes from one single distillery. It doesn't mean anything else. Now, let's move on to B. I don't know what to expect here. I can see right away there is no difference in color. One of the things about Scotland that is tricky is that they are allowed to use coloring. While I evaluate color in Scotch whiskey and consider it, it's not always just purely gonna be based on the type of wood it's been aged in, which of course will contribute to the color. I don't know whether one of these has used caramel coloring or not. My guess is that the inexpensive whiskey probably used caramel coloring to make me feel as if I was drinking something very aged. I'm gonna come right out and say it. This is a blended whiskey. And the reason why I know that is because I'm getting a slight whisper of smoke and peat. Blended whiskey producers basically take elements of different single malt scotch distilleries, blending them together, and in this case, I believe they use a tiny bit of smoking peat to lend a little bit of that character in the whiskey. Along with the vanillas, along with some of the creaminess and sugars I get out of a nice whiskey, I am tasting A. Let's see how that goes. Before I taste, actually, I just want to tell you one thing. You don't have to be too dorky about it. You don't have to do that Kentucky chew. Sorry, Kentuckians. You don't have to be like breathing in and do all this weird stuff because one, that's not how you're really gonna drink whiskey realistically. And two, I think it just looks a little weird. That is a gorgeous whiskey. Not only did it demonstrate beautiful aromatics of that orange blossom and that butterscotch, but the finish, which we often talk about with the whiskey, this was really warming and smooth. I got a lot of additional beautiful flavors on what we call the retro nasal olfaction, which is when you breathe out and the aromatics pass back through those receptors at the bridge of your nose. And it doesn't really trigger too much of my trigeminal nerve, which are pain receptors. So sometimes that can be a good thing, right? So we like spankings or cinnamon or spicy wings, and likewise, we can like a little bit of that in our whiskey. This, however, was sublime. It was rich. To me, this is a sign of a really fabulously made scotch whiskey. Let's take a taste of B. Ah, this is so different. This one is very thin. It disappears very quickly. It doesn't last that long, and sometimes you want that in a whiskey. It's actually fine. You know, maybe it's before dinner. Whiskey is an occasion after all, unless you're like me and you have it for breakfast. One of the ways that distillers can get flavor out of their whiskey, really tweak the flavor, is the type of still that they use. Single malt scotch distillers, and I believe this to be a single malt scotch, they use pot stills. So those are those big giant onion copper stills. The blended whiskey, a type of still that they use called a column still, developed in the late 1800s. And that allowed distillers to continuously distill 24 seven without that batch distillation overhead of cleaning and starting up and firing up the stills. So I believe this is also a column distillation. So I'm excited. I'm gonna reveal which one I think is the expensive whiskey. I believe A is the expensive whiskey. This is the whiskey that someone would pay a premium for. Ah! 
<laughs> I got it. I'm very excited about this. $165 a bottle and it shows. I felt like I could sit with this for a long time and that is the sign of a wonderful single malt scotch. And with the blend, this is perfect. We roll out of bed and you're like, I need a drink with my oatmeal. This is the jam. Hey, hello, rye whiskey. One of my favorite types of whiskey. I would call it the American underdog. I will taste it and nose it in a beautiful old fashioned tumbler. I love using these for actually most of my whiskeys. I love the look, I love the feel of these. I throw whiskey uh, in these glasses, put ice on it and just enjoy. Rye whiskey is different than bourbon in that rye must be made with 51% rye as it's grain as opposed to bourbon, which is made with 51% corn. You can use other kinds of grains in that 49%, but as long as it's 51% rye, aged in new oak cast, we can call it a rye whiskey. Before prohibition, rye would have been the most popular whiskey enjoyed in the United States. When the first immigrants came over from different parts of the world, they would have tried growing rye before growing anything else. Now, one of the things about American whiskeys is that wonderful, big, robust, loud, in your face flavor that comes from those new oak casks which deliver an influx of flavor. They hustle right up to your nose, they come out, they hug you and they say, I'm American whiskey. There's a slight bit of spice and kick to a rye whiskey. Let's see if I can get some of those elements out of this whiskey. Good news everybody. I get those notes. This whiskey really demonstrates some of that grassy, herbaceous, white pepper quality that I want to smell in a rye. What I'm finding a lot on the shelves these days is that they're kind of, pun intended, blending together. The smell of rye and bourbon and all these whiskeys that are jumping on the market, it's hard to tell the difference amongst them. I don't get an incredible lot of complexity in this, but it's giving me what I want in a rye. Moving on to B. Now, if color is an indicator of price, this whiskey, of course, looks very dark, very aged. I'm gonna assume that it's been in the cask a lot longer, and if it's in the cask longer, it's gonna cost a little more, but we don't know for sure. The color differential is tremendous here. These ryes will not be colored with caramel. I'm looking at this color of this beautiful whiskey, a nice dark rich color. I'm guessing that it's over two years old. I get the elements of the herbaceous note, that white pepper note, but because it's been aged for a while in wood, it's not as much as I got out of this whiskey. Now I'm guessing that A is much younger, so what we're getting are some of the notes of the wood that are, I don't want to say masking, but silencing, maybe quieting, those, those rye um, herbaceous notes. Right now I'd say I like them both equally on the nose. I like this for the richness, and I do like A because it's really just very obviously a rye. Whiskey A. I really, really get the grain on this. You know, the longer a whiskey sits in wood, the more distant you become in terms of the aromatics to the actual original grain. A good distiller will retain the character of the grain and use the wood in combination to create complexity so that you can taste it all. What I like about this is the wood is not overpowering this rye whiskey. Moving on to B, obviously uh, you can see the darker color here, which I know this to be aged longer in wood. Does that age mean that this is a better whiskey or a better rye? Much bigger mouthfeel, more luxurious, it's velvety, which I love about this whiskey. But for a rye drinker, I would say I have to search for the properties of rye that I didn't have to search for in A. But what's interesting is that I believe this one's probably the more expensive whiskey because it's been aged for so much longer and I can see that from the wood color, I can taste that, I can get that from the viscosity, the mouthfeel. It's very velvety, very luxurious rye whiskey. I believe that Whiskey B is the more expensive option. Aha, uh -huh. not only is this one more expensive, this is a $400 rye whiskey. Incredible. This whiskey, obviously uh, rare. We're getting up to a rare vintage 10-year-old rye. They're harder to come by. I'd go for this. This is this is perfectly fine for me. I'm, I'm a cheap date. I, this is great. You just put this on the rocks and I am good to go.
Okay, we have Irish whiskeys here. Uh, one of my favorite styles of whiskey. What makes Irish whiskey traditionally so wonderful is that it's a lighter, it's a fragrant. It tends to be a more approachable whiskey. There's a nice finesse to them. They tend to be floral. A lot of times triple distilled. So the more you distill, the more of the heavy congeners and molecules are you're, you're getting out of that spirit and, and refining what that whiskey smells and tastes like. So looking at this color, um, I don't see anything stand out. It's a nice golden hue, probably not super aged. I get some lily of the valley, garden, springtime feel to this, green grass, mixing with those beautiful vanillas that you get out of wood. So I want to say that this whiskey's aged in, in, a, in maybe a couple of different kinds of wood. There's not as much of a hard definition of Irish whiskeys. You know, of course, it must be aged in Ireland, created in Ireland. But there is many different kinds of Irish whiskeys as there are American and Scotch whiskeys. Whiskey B. I'm curious. I don't really see uh, a difference in color between these two whiskeys. Whiskey B has a lot of the same qualities as Whiskey A. That same springtime feel, very approachable, easy whiskey. The difference with B is that I have to dig in a little bit deeper to get at it. It doesn't waft at me the way A's did. They may come from the same distillery. Now this isn't unusual. In Ireland, there are large distilleries that are making many of your favorite brands. Out of that distillery, they're gonna create a pot still whiskey or a blended whiskey or a grain whiskey. This one is like a floral fruit basket. Feels like something I wanna drink today. It is the springtime. Whiskey A. That is a yummy whiskey. Does that sound like a whiskey expert? Well, it does today. It's almost like, confectioner's sugar mixed with flowers, a little bit of honey, and then some richness. It's like nectar of the gods. It's golden, beautiful, little nugget from heaven. Okay, let's go to B. I kind of want to stick on this one because I really, I really love this whiskey. I want it to be the cheap one. I don't think it is, but I don't know. Maybe it is. It's not bad. It's not bad. Actually, I have to say, it's offering a lot more on the taste than it did on the nose, and this surprises me. Some overlapping flavors with A, there was that kind of confectioner's sugary kind of thing, but I would say it didn't have the complexity. Porch sipping whiskey, nothing fancy, but this one had that sexiness to it that I would drink over and over again. I'm going to guess that A is the more expensive whiskey, and if it isn't, I will buy cases of this because I, I think it's great. I'm sure I might buy cases of it anyways. 104.35, oh man. So if you're looking for a fabulous Irish whiskey, something as sublime and beautiful as this, look for a pot still whiskey. I think you'll come pretty close to finding something this beautiful. Okay, we've got bourbon here, and I can tell immediately that this one is darker than this one. This might be a little bit older. Bourbon is, I like to think of as the heart and soul of America's great whiskey. It is made with at least 51% corn. That right there is your biggest differentiating factor between bourbon and other kinds of American spirits. American whiskeys stand out amongst the rest for its big, vibrant, robust, nutty flavors. You know what it is right away, and that's because American whiskeys must be aged in brand new oak casks. A lot of people like to think of these new casks as like the first dip of a tea bag into hot water. Tons of flavor get in there very, very quickly, and we tend to drink our bourbons at a younger age than you would an aged, aged scotch, which can be 30, 40, 50 years old in some cases. That whiskey A, right away I get orange peel, some citrus, which I, I love to have in an American bourbon. I almost even get some cedar and pine, like some fresh wood in this, something tropical in here, something a little pineapple-y that puzzles me actually. Some of those tropical notes that I'm smelling and some of the fruitiness probably developed during distillation in combination with some of the vanillas I'm getting from the wood. And that complexity lets me know that this is a well distilled spirit. So here I am gonna pour B. As I said, I could see already before I even poured these ones darker than the other. Bourbon makers do not use coloring in their whiskey. So this is a little darker, but not so much where I would definitively say that's an older whiskey. 
Ah, uh, totally different. I love that. I love that these are so different. There are three ingredients, water, yeast, and grain. When we talk about a perfumed whiskey, this is perfume. This is rose, carnation almost. I feel like I could, you know, bathe in this. So let me move on to the taste. Before I even taste it, I want to say, as it's been sitting here, I'm getting some of the deeper caramels and butterscotch notes out of this, starting to kind of open up, warm a little bit. So again, that leads me to think this might be the older whiskey. I'm not sure though. That's very beautiful. If you had, you know, one of those candied oranges, that's what I get on the back palate. It's very warming, which I like in an American whiskey. I, I want it to, to, to make noise. The viscosity of it is not as thick and rich as I thought it would be. Maybe like a eight to 10 year old whiskey, I'm guessing. Let me taste B. That is a nice, classic American bourbon. This has that toasted marshmallow, the caramel. It doesn't ask too much of me. It doesn't have this incredibly long finish. The viscosity isn't as rich as say a very old age scotch, but it still delivers a really nice flavor. It coats my palate. My guess is these are Kentucky bourbons. The majority of whiskey that you see on the shelves will come from Kentucky. Because of those complexity of aromatics, I'm gonna say both of these whiskeys are at least two years old. My guess is this one is probably the older whiskey because of that strange tropical notes, this pine needly thing in there. I'm gonna guess that whiskey A is the more expensive whiskey. Oh, yes! <laughs> I like that. The reason why I chose A as the more expensive whiskey is because it was just unusual. And that's what I really thought was compelling about A and would justify its price. And don't be afraid to go to a bar, order two, and do exactly what I'm doing and see what your palate says. Japanese whiskey, let's dig right into this. It's a beautiful style of whiskey from none other than Japan. But what a lot of people are surprised about is that the Japanese have been making whiskey for close to 100 years now. The defining factor of what makes a Japanese whiskey a Japanese whiskey is really a philosophy to the approach of making it. So while there's these hard rules of what can be a scotch and what can be a bourbon, what defines Japanese whiskey is really the way the whiskey maker interacts with the stills, the grains, and the whole process that creates that flavor. It can be summed up in something called continuous refinement. If there was a change to be made, they'd change it, they'd slow slowly, slowly tweak that whiskey time and time again until they got something refined and beautiful. I had one distiller tell me, if the whiskey you taste now tastes the same in 10 years, then I've failed. So if I were to look at this Japanese whiskey, um, obviously it's very light in color. I expect that also to relay on the nose and let's find out. This is an extremely, extremely light whiskey. And light meaning that I don't get an incredible amount of flavor. A little bit of lemon, and I do find that in a lot of the big Japanese whiskey makers, Yamazaki in particular, they're one of the big distilleries, they often get a little bit of a lemon note on their whiskeys. Moving on to whiskey B from Japan, you can see it's a little bit darker. So just comparing color in a glass, they become more similar when you compare apples to apples. But already from here, I have not even put this to my nose yet, and I can smell this whiskey. It's a lush fruit basket, for lack of a better word. Oh, this is lovely. If you could imagine a pear dipped in honey, it's got a little bit of vanilla, some sugars in it. It's just absolutely gorgeous on the nose. So let's taste. This tastes an awful lot like scotch. Very light, very easy, very approachable. I'm assuming this is a young whiskey because I don't get a lot of bouquet coming off of that, but the texture of it's very creamy. I think Japan is really known for creating this complexity that kind of makes you think twice about the whiskey. Let me move on to this one. This is B. Ah, what a surprise. <laughs> this whiskey is amazing. It smells soft and orchard-like and a lot of bouquet, but on the back end, after I swallowed right back here, there's a real dry kick to it. There's like a pop of tannins on the back end, which lets me know that this has been aged over time to get some of that wood property. I love that in a whiskey. That's my favorite thing. Both of these whiskeys demonstrate something which I call true complexity, which is that the nose is making you feel like it's gonna move down one path and then you taste it 
it and you're like, whoa, there's something different in there that I really didn't expect. And both of these whiskeys do that. Because of that tannic back end, I know that this is aged. I can see the color this is aged. This is the older whiskey and therefore more expensive whiskey. So for the reveal, 45 and 200. <laughs> yes, that is a very expensive whiskey. This whiskey is fabulous. Definitely worth that $200 when you compare it against many other whiskeys of the world. We've tasted a lot of whiskeys today. I've talked about olfaction, mouthfeel, viscosity, age, price points, but it's an experience and it's an occasion. And I don't think there's anything wrong with you picking up a whiskey and saying, I love it or I don't like it. Cheers.